Welcome back to the next video in the Fantasy Grounds rules, rule set wizard tutorial series. My name's Dan, and today we're going to expand on lists. So on our Kashi main window, we've got two lists already. We've got our armor list and our weapons list, and also on our abilities page, we've got a whole stack of lists and therefore all the different skills. If we quickly jump over the fantasy grounds, we can see here um, our list in action. We've got our armor lists, our weapon skill lists, and we've also got uh, all our different um, straight skill lists from awareness skills down to technique skills. Now, what we really want to do here is make these buttons into functioning links so that you can actually um, firstly view more information about the items in these lists and also so that you can create libraries of this information and drag and drop them into your character sheets. So the first thing we can do is uh, we'll go to our character sheet main and we've got a list here. So we've got a list here and it's our armor detail list. So we'll go to armor detail and we're going to delete this element. We're going to replace it with a custom control. Set some parameters here. We're going to go for 20 by 20. Uh, we'll nudge this into what we think is close to the right position for the moment. And then we're going to drill down into some of these properties here. So we want to set the custom class name to link field and that will pick up link field properties from core rpg we want to then go to custom properties and we're going to set some properties here and the first one we're going to do is the property name is class and the property value is going to be armor and we'll need to create that window but if we Put that information in there for the moment, and we also need to give this a name, so it's armor link. And that's probably enough information to get us started. So let's publish that. And reload Fantasy Grounds and our character sheet. And we now have these buttons. They're a little bit too far to the right. We can fix that. When I click on them, we don't see anything happen. Uh, so let's load the console up. And we can actually see that we're unable to create window with invalid class armor. And let's just force that to happen again. I click on this. Unable to create window with invalid class, but we can also see that it's car sheet ID 001, which is this character sheet, and it's armor list and ID001, if I click the other one, we'll see number two. So it knows what entry this is, in what character this is, um, and it's getting that from the link field. But what we have to do is create our class armor. So let's go and do that. Let's create a window, and we'll set the Band is to 350 by 350 to start with. Let's set the name to armor. And then we need to, let's set a frame. We're going to use Build dark is fine. Okay, we'll use that record just for the moment. Okay, so we can see that when we now click on our armor entry, uh, we get a pop up window um, for that. Now we've got no information in these fields. So now we're going to build that info. Let's create a string field. We'll place it 
around here. We'll set the width a little bit longer. We'll set the font. Reference header. Set the height to 24. And we will give it a name, just armor name. And we'll just try that. Actually, let's just quickly check from armor detail that this is, no, it's not. So armor name is this field. Okay, that's fine. So armor name and armor location. We can add, we'll add both of those in shortly. So let's just try this one with armor name and we'll publish that. Okay, and we can now see that our Kevlar opens a window called Kevlar and our armor suit opens one called uh, armor suit and these are editable if I edit this uh, an armor shirt instead uh, we can see it's reflected straight away here in our character sheet let's add a, another label here or we'll add a label, sorry, and we'll call this one. The text here will be location. The font is fine. Just change the width here to perhaps 80. And we're going to put in a string field. We're going to place a string field next to it. We'll make that. Okay, so that'll be 95, 50, and the width will be 240, and we're going to set the underline offset to 1, and we will give it a name. So this is armor location. Got those correct, and we want to name this so it's armor location label. We want everything to have proper names. We'll publish this one. Okay, so he hasn't picked this up, and that's obviously because I've got a mismatch between this um, name and the name that I've used in this field. To check that, we go back to armor detail and we can see that I've, it is actually the full name armor location so let's fix that up here armor location and we'll also fix it on the label not that this one actually does anything but just to keep it consistent next thing we need to do is have the stopping power set those down to approximately there okay they're at least one pixel over and we'll lift them we'll drop them down by three pixels over one, down three, and this one is actually going to be stopping power. It's not quite going to fit, okay, so again as, as usual there's going to be some massaging of this stuff, so we'll make these a hundred which also means that we need to Shorten this one to 240, it's 220. And we need to move it over 10 pixels. This one, we're actually going to remove that one 
I'm going to replace it with a number field. And let's set some properties on that. So height is too tall. 24 is better. Width, we can leave that at 60, it's fine. But we'll set this to, instead of 115, we'll 113, two pixels shorter because that's two pixels tall, four pixels taller, we're going to split the difference. The Y position here will be 75. Sorry, we've done that wrong. Uh, 75 should become 73, and the X position here should be 115. Okay, and we want to name that field. It should be armor stopping power, and our label armor SP. Label. Let's duplicate that again. Let's see what we've got. Ten is correct, one hundred and three is not correct. Let's make that. 105. Gap is not consistent with that one. We're going to have to drop that one down as well. And here, this should be 103. But we'll probably drag all of these down 5 pixels. And those gaps should be consistent then. Now, stopping power needs to be. I bumped that accidentally. Stopping power needs to become armor penalty. Armor penalty label. We've got armor penalty. And we also need that's probably it, but we'll check one more thing. When we look at our car sheet main, no, when we look at our armor detail, we've got black for stopping power and red for penalty. Why don't we replicate that here? So let's change this one from field dark to field black. Just small tweaks, just for some consistency across the product. And then we will add another one here. We were going to have a label. Actually, what we'll do here is put a formatted text field. Let's view this. So we've got 10, 137. This should become uh, Y position will be 140. The height um, 80 is fine. What we're going to do is make it so it can grow. Instead of fill dark, we'll go with fill light. And we will also go with armor um, description. And we want to okay, it doesn't look like this field can grow. So what we'll do is we will make it the full height instead of 80 tall. What's 180 give us? Close, let's make it 200. And we will also put a scroll bar in here for if it's too big. We'll grab a scroll bar, put it here.
and the scroll bar needs to anchor to So we've set the vertical anchor to both. We'll set the horizontal anchor to right. And we'll go down to the scroll bar target and we'll set it to armor description. So set the target armor description and then we will test this out so we open one of these up okay so data type mismatch on path armor description okay that's fine that's because somewhere uh, I've used armor description already and the format that I used previously for armor description is not formatted text, which is what I set it as now. I should get that same error when I open this one. No? So I've, obviously I hadn't done that for armor shirt. So if we close this for a moment, if I get rid of the Kevlar headwear, Let's create that again. So it's head, it's Kevlar, gives a stopping power of seven and no penalty. If I open that up, we don't get any warning this time. So we've got our heading or our, na or our name, we've got the location, stopping power of seven. If I can change these, they'll reflect on the character sheet. Uh, there's no armor penalty for seven. And we want to fill some text up here. So I'm going to just paste some text in here. It's formatted text. We can see that for this we want to remove the line breaks. Okay, that's great. And we can see that our scroll bar appeared. Um, probably the positioning is not quite right, um, but the scroll bar appeared when my text uh, outgrew the size of the frame. If I get rid of this last sentence, our scroll bar disappears. So this is working fairly well. We're obviously missing a couple of key elements here. One is a link item here, and the other really important one is a close window. There's no way here for me to close this. All I can do is right click to close this. So we want to add another custom control. We'll just set that to 20 by 20 and we'll get it up here in the corner and let's set some other parameters so if we set this to use an advanced template this is from core rpg close record sheet and we'll change this to armor close that should work we also want one for the link field. Let's push this up here. We'll change this one to a link field. And we want another link. Let's also try something else here. Let's grab this instead of frame field dark. Let's try the chat box, which is this one. Let's see how this scales uh, with these elements in here. Okay, so look, that box works. Some of our spacing is not quite right. Um, 
but we have our link field. So this is a draggable field, right? Uh, it didn't drag very well. Okay, we'll work on, on that. Um, we've also got our close button. It's working properly. And we've got a new frame. Probably we'll create a different frame, maybe with similar to this, but maybe with black corners, something like that. Maybe um, only with corners on the bottom, because we've got these other icons on the top. Um, maybe we put a red edge in the middle instead of on the corners. So we just play with some of the styling elements. Let's go down to frames, create a new one. This needs to be 50. That's those corners that we've got there. And let's go back to armor. Change this frame to record sheet. And we also need to work out how to get that one to work properly. Um, and there's one other thing I wanted to change. But I think on our character sheet, no, on our armor detail, we want to move these over a few pixels. Um, whatever, for whatever reason, that display is not accurate compared to what I actually see. Open one of these up. Okay, so we have Kevlar armor. See that record? I think I might be want to bump these out a little bit more. We might push this out here, um, adjust this record a little bit. But our close buttons and our link buttons are, are good. Actually, our link button isn't good. I need to fix that one. So let's work out what's wrong there. Armor. Let's go with still not quite right. Okay. I know what we've done wrong here. Okay, link field is a custom class name instead of an advanced template. And then we also need to set a property name of class, or the class for this, as armor. Let's try to publish that. Okay, I think that's better. No, it's not quite right. But if we try this. Okay, yeah, that's the right link. It's not carrying um, some other information across here with the link names and things like that. So I'll have to work out what we do there. But it may be because we've shortcuts. We, we haven't quite put in all the um, standard information that would be on a core RPG record of the same name. I've, there'd normally be uh, three window classes, the parent window class, a header window class, and a body or content window class. And I just stuck everything in one, and I suspect I need to dig in a little bit further and find out how to do that properly in the rule set wizard. Okay, so after a little bit more massaging, we've updated the record frame to this one, and we have changed out 
armor record to look like this. Uh, so we've added in some, we've got the close record, we've got the icon to lock and unlock the records, and we've got the link record. And for the most part, uh, this is working. There's still a few more details to work out, um, but let's have a look at what it looks like on the character sheet. Okay, when we click on the link icons here, we should get one for the head armor. Um, let's move this over so we can see it. Oh, we can see it better on here just in terms of the frame. So we've um, pushed these back out to the corners. Um, so we've still very much inspired by the original frame, but we've we've mixed it up a little bit. You can see it's it is has got its own unique elements, and we've got another one here for our body, and you can see that we can lock this record. Um, although it's not fully working just yet, uh, we'll lock the record if we close it and reopen it, it's working. So I've got to work out something on that trigger there to make sure that that uh, activates uh, any time this button is changed. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you uh, got some value out of that and I'll see you on the next, vi next video.